in the name of personal injury law. We all know that areas involving road construction or building construction can be dangerous. Unfortunately, many people are hurt in and around these areas. We have personal injury attorney Steve Sinus from the Sinus Dramas Law Firm, along with his colleagues, Steve Weston and John Homa, to talk about the unique issues that come up in personal injury cases involving construction areas. It's good to have all three of you with us today. Nice to be here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So, Steve, why are personal injury cases in construction areas unique? Well, at our firm, we handle various types of personal injury cases. And in our experience, uh, when someone's injured in a construction area, uh, it just brings up more unique issues. The cases tend to be more complicated. And so we're here today to try to explain that. Uh, just in general, the issues that uh, typically are more complicated or unique include how you establish liability, which is the ability to hold a party responsible for an injury, how to show that they are responsible. Uh, there are issues with which parties to sue. You have a construction area. There are likely many different parties that are somehow working in that area. So you have to figure out some issues there. Uh, you also have uh, parties blaming each other. Uh, one party may say, hey, this should have happened, but it's not our fault. It's the other guy's fault. Uh, and you also have typically pretty severe injuries, just given how these uh, injuries occur. And so there's some unique issues there. And we're just glad to try to talk to everyone about it today so they better understand. So what are the unique issues regarding liability in the construction areas? Well, Lisa, uh, there can be what I like to call camouflaged liability. Um, let me give you a couple of examples. When we are talking about highway construction, which in Michigan, summer is construction season, but even more so now after COVID funding and additional road work is being done, uh, there are codes and uniform standards that require that construction zones be set up in certain ways to enhance the public safety or diminish the public danger during the construction process. So if you are driving through a construction zone, following all the speed limits and doing what you're supposed to do, and all of a sudden you're hit by another vehicle, it very well may be that the driver of that vehicle is negligent in causing the crash. But it may also be that the road construction company who set up the construction zone failed to follow the uniform manual of traffic control devices and that as a result they created a very haphazard and dangerous scenario that wasn't all the fault of the person that hit you. So we need to look into what happened, how did it happen, and that involves a lot of unique issues requiring multiple different kinds of expertise of individuals who work in those areas. Similarly, in a home construction, which many people are doing now because of remodeling, because spending so much time in their home in the last two years, they said, boy, wouldn't it be nice if we could do this? Well, there are also a multi-layers of construction codes, work safety rules, and a unique body of the law that has evolved around recognizing control in these work areas between a subcontractor, a general contractor, a homeowner, and who's responsible for what aspect of these jobs. So it requires a very intense level of factual research and investigation in any of these construction areas in order to determine what actually happened and why it happened. So what are the unique issues um, about who to sue, which parties to bring into the case um, when we're dealing with these types of construction and um, home cases? Well, um, as Steve mentioned, these cases can typically involve multiple different parties. Um, in the context of home improvement or building construction, you might have a general contractor, a subcontractor, and various other individuals around the work site. Um, and more so, 
Also, in the automobile crash example that Steve mentioned, you have two separate individuals that have contributed to uh, the harm and two potentially individuals who are at fault, but they serve totally separate roles. And under Michigan law, each party is only responsible uh, for its own fault. And so fault is generally allocated in these types of cases. By the jury. By the jury or the judge or the fact finder. And therefore, if an uh, individual who has been harmed wants to seek full redress or full compensation for all of their injuries, they will have to bring a claim against each individual that had fault or is partially liable for the harm and make sure that everybody is involved so that there is not an empty chair or somebody that fault could be attributed to that's not part of the case, which ultimately would lead to the uh, client or the injured person not receiving full compensation for their injuries. So Steve had mentioned that the parties can blame each other while they're trying to defend their own actions. How does that work? Well, as John just mentioned, uh, it's the job of the fact finder in any kind of litigation ultimately to determine who was at fault in causing the injuries and damages and what was their percentage of fault. So to the extent that a subcontractor can blame a general contractor or to the extent that the at fault driver in a road construction case can blame the construction company uh, or the Michigan Department of Transportation, they can reduce their percentage of fault and therefore not have to compensate out of their own proceeds the injured plaintiff. And that is a regular occurrence uh, that happens. And because these scenarios, whether home construction or roadway construction, have developed uh, a complicated legal uh, framework to assess who had what duty to carry out what action. It, it puts the onus on the injured party's attorney to really be familiar with all of the statutes, codes, and law that have been developed to uh, apportion responsibility for safe passage during these road construction areas and uh, to properly and fairly apportion responsibility for safe work areas in home construction. And without knowing how to go about that, as John mentioned, you may be suing the wrong party, you may be suing two of the five parties that need to be involved in order to obtain full compensation. And so those become very important decisions early on, which is why if you have time limitations, it's really important to include everybody uh, so that time limits don't preclude you from later finding out, oh man, I should have, I should have included this party or that party. And that's the assessment that the attorney needs to make. So let's talk about the severity of injuries in these cases. Um, why are they more severe in these cases and how does that impact the case? Yeah, and to kind of wrap it up here uh, with our time left, uh, it's not lose sight of what these cases are about. They're about people who are typically severely or if not catastrophically injured. Mm -hmm. And so while you have to sort out all these other issues with fault and naming the right parties, you have to get to know your client's injuries uh, the, the nature of the injuries, their prognosis. These cases also can include medical expenses. So you have to get life care plans. So there's this whole other issue of working up the damages in these cases that takes a lot of time and effort by the attorneys involved. That's helpful. And thank you for helping these severely injured people. Thank you for having us. In the Name of Personal Injury Law is brought to you by the Sinus Dramus Law Firm.